a very good evening. Thank you very much for being a part of the Uganda Catholic Television. It's a Wednesday, the 13th day of November 2024. I am Sunday Gloria Aboch with UCTV News. Now, the Uganda Catholic Management and Training Institute, UCMTI, welcomed uh, the Archbishop of Kampala, Paul Semogerere, for a blessing mass and tour of the Institute. During his visit, the Archbishop was shown various departments departments where students showcase the skills they have developed through their studies. Impressed by the talent and dedication he witnessed, Archbishop Semogere expressed gratitude for the opportunity to visit and praise the Institute's commitment to skill-based education. Uganda Catholic Management and Training Institute has hosted the Archbishop of Kampala Archdiocese, His Grace Archbishop Pose Mogere, from Mass to bless their institute. After welcoming him, the Archbishop was taken to different departments where students exhibited their skills, which they have attained from this institute. You must welcome to Uganda Catholic Management Training Institute, where skills and virtues for excellence are practiced. Please join so us as homes. Schools come in different shapes and sizes. How much is that shop? This shirt, it is uh, eight, 8, 000. You can make it here or you can go to just make it here. You can make it here and make it one like this one. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's it. A mass of blessings was led by the Archbishop and he thanked the Institute for hosting him for the first time as the Archbishop of Kampala Archdiocese. <laughs> I'm happy to be here today, uh, Madam uh, Principal. This, we are too close to, 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 to the, the Archbishop's residence. And uh, in a few months' time, actually in January, I'll be making three years as Archbishop of Kampala. And it's a pity that this is the first time that I, 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 I come to visit. And I know this is not your fault. Been, you've been longing and waiting, but the, the office has been so busy. Thank you for showing me around what you're doing. I've realized that you, we can make use of you as the Archbishop's house when, when we need you. And we not on, not, on, not on charity, we shall be able to pay you. Archbishop Osemogere encouraged the students to ask other people outside to join UCMTI because of its conducive environment and the strategic location. I asked one of the, of the students why they had not chosen the other, and she said this is more conducive to go to study in this place. So thank you. I think you can market this, go and tell the others that you need this is the best area so far where one can come and study and study well and study peacefully because I've never heard of riots in this area. So I would like to ask you, those who come from around here, it's too close and not very expensive. Encourage your young people to come and join us and join this institute to be equipped with the knowledge and the skills. In his interview, the Archbishop says that he was encouraged by the skills he saw from the students during the exhibition. Things that we make by ourselves and we give and sell to ourselves. That is how countries develop, that is how our country will develop. Things made by us and bought by, by our, our people. Uh, that is how countries grow. So I've been encouraged by the, the courses that are taken there. Uh, the, those who are doing electricity, those who are in gardens, agriculture, those who are preparing for, uh, you know, dresses, garments, and so on. Those are local. Uh, they are not very good fashions that I've seen, and I've ordered one for myself because I know you can't find it anywhere else but here, and it is so fitting that we should promote local uh, and encourage people to do things from here, innovations of our own people here, uh, so that, uh, and promote them and uh, support them, because we have nothing to lose and we have everything to gain. The guild president, UCMTI, adds that this institute is a home and the best place for learning. Uganda Catholic Management is our home of learning and skills 
quality and experience. Susan Najita has praised their library, which she described as the best in the country. We have the best library. If you are to move around, it is one of them. The resources are there, the books, everything we need to excel is there. M. Frank, UCTV News. The Archbishop of the Archdiocese of Thoreau, His Grace Dr. Emmanuel Obo, has endorsed the establishment of the Tadal Sako, a new savings and credit cooperative aimed at empowering and promoting economic development in local communities. Speaking in support of the initiative, Dr. Obo emphasized the importance of financial inclusion as a key tool in combating poverty, encouraging members of the Archdiocese to join the circle as a means of improving their financial stability and fostering community growth. Savings and credit cooperative organizations play a critical role in empowering individuals and communities, providing a platform for members to pull their resources together for mutual benefit. Now, these financial institutions, rooted in the cooperative spirit, offer accessible credit facilities to their members while promoting a culture of savings. In Uganda, circles have become an integral part of the financial landscape, with 42% of Ugandans now opting to borrow from circles over commercial banks to meet their financial needs, as highlighted by the recent Finscope survey. For the people of Toro Archdiocese, the launch of the Tadao Sako represents a significant milestone in the journey towards financial empowerment and poverty reduction. His Grace Dr. Emmanuel Obo, the Archbishop of the Archdiocese of Toro, has been vocal in supporting the creation of the Saving Sako as a means to uplift the community. He emphasized how financial stability and good money management are central to overcoming poverty, offering a hopeful vision for the future of the Archdiocese and its members. Tadal, you are beginning through the youth and so on, but also our catechists, you are catechists, by the way, those who, who taught you back home there have started their circle, a cooperative society. I believe that working together in that way, we shall make life going for everybody, helping like the widow who helped Elijah to overcome the challenges and the challenges in our families are many they need the financial entrepreneurship to be part of our life at this present moment and the present age the Lord be with you Dr. Henry Nakalet Opolot, the chairman of Tadal, has pointed out that the focus of the initiative will be on commissioning and the smooth operationalization of the circle. By establishing Tadal Circle, they aim to improve the financial well-being of the local community, offering members access to financial services that will support personal and collective development. Now going forward, we have to strengthen our circle. The Tadal Circle, which has been now registered, we want to make sure people get registered, it gets commissioned and gets operational. In that way, we'll bring people together to raise, to bring together, they are put resources together to do a bit of self-help, but again, be able now to support more initiatives of Toro. We see that as a way that is going to bring more people in. And also, we tend to reach out now to the universities and institutes of higher learning around to make sure we bring the young people to, to, to Tadal and all our activities will continue. The issue of supporting the church during Christmas, supporting the newly ordained priests with the, 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 the priestly requirements that they dearly need, and all other events we shall be strengthening. Actually, Okecho, the chairman of the Cooperative Circle, also highlights the broader benefits that the circles bring to community development, adding that these institutions are pivotal in creating opportunities for members, fostering economic empowerment, and stimulating local activities. Now, the resources mobilized through the circle will be used to drive projects that address the most pressing needs in the community, whether be it education, infrastructure or health. As a means of social economic empowerment, we have decided to start up this circle to ensure that we have <coughs> easy access to financial services to members, but also as a means of ensuring that not only do we come for prayers just, but also we do activities that are developmental for our members. We intend that when this circle starts to get into operation, 
we, we tend to invest into many areas. For example, currently what we are doing is members saving, but also we want to venture into many activities that will bring in true money to the pockets of the members of Tadal who congregate monthly, such that not only do we come for only prayers, but we also participate in activities that generate income into the members of Tadal. The Tadal Circle is not just about providing financial services, but also creating a foundation for community development and poverty alleviation. By pulling resources together, members of the Circle can work towards improving their financial positions, building sustainable livelihoods, and contributing to overall growth of the Toro Archdiocese. Nora Osende, for UCTV News. <laughs>now female members of parliament from the east african legislative assembly iala have issued a heartfelt call for support for less privileged communities urging those able to help to extend a hand the appeal was made during their visit to the mother teresa baby's home where the mps donated essential items to homeless students as a gesture of compassion and solidarity now the iala delegation has been in uganda for three weeks engaging in discussions on strategies to advance developments across east african nations and it's been our tradition Every partner state where we hold the Ayala sittings, we ensure that at least we visit a program supporting the needy, all engage with women programs. But this time around, we thought it was important through uh, our, our sisters in Uganda, Honorable Rose and the Honorable Sarah Opendi, to come and visit now a charity home for babies. And of course, this is great work. It's beautiful work, supporting the needy, but also touching lives of young babies who are the future generation of Uganda, of East Africa. And we came here to donate various items, as you saw for yourself, including foodstuffs and even other utensils for, for children and some modest contribution. And we go back happy because we feel we've made a small difference in the lives of these angels. And we take a message in all our countries, but also East Africa, to support because if this child grows, these are the future engineers, they are the future leaders of this nation, they are the future citizens of East Africa. So it's an, an obligation to ensure that we care for the needy, especially the children, and it's a call for everyone to support humanity. We look after 150 primary children. We pay school fees for them from nursery to primary seven. And for this year, we had 20 children who sat for P7. We pray that we get success so that we can join secondary school. And another activity is the elderly project. We look after the elderly people in the community. Though we don't have a home for them, it is our future dream if we can build a home for the elderly. We look after them from their homes. We provide for them, we give them medicine, we give them food supplies on a monthly basis. There are a hundred of them, they are in different communities. Our home is a transitional home. Today you might find baby Regan here, and then the next week, by God's grace, we might find the parents. Oh. We might have found a foster parent for him. Njagala kusaba na Uganda, tuvere no go mutima, ugo kuyamba, na ya techi kule nyo. Aba sobora, ukubanti, wajawo mwano umu, numutuwala, no vera na yengo ngo muzadde. Na chochi yamba, kubanga bana hapa natiba sobora kukulira wana. Beta aga kubera maka. So, bana Uganda, tuvere neze mpisa, tuleme kulinda abantu kuvewele. Bajaniba Jawaban, Abamut 
tebazala tebaina bana waka subulo kujja no tu no jawo mwana omu no mutwala nabwe cho sababa ali bwero bonna banange abantu abakola wano centereza children center baby home bageza ko byona kuyamba babana bebaleka bazade babo babazala abachala babazala ne babasula oba mutoyi oba mukubo oba muchachi bona bali wana bana balabika bulungi wali Thank you very much for watching UCTV News. We are going to take a break and we'll be back with more stories. UCTV, good news for all. Radio Purchase, the best value-based community radio in Eastern Africa, running 24-7 with professional staff and solar energy backup of up to 500 kilowatts peak. We rock the whole of Northern Uganda and the world using seven languages on 90.9 FM and 94.5 FM in Arua on Ediofe Hill, 99.7 FM at Moyo on Adua Hill, 101.4 FM at For God in Gulu, and online at www.radiopatches.org or download the Radio Patches app from Google Play Store and Apple Store. Radio Patches, peace of Christ for all. Welcome back. You're watching the Uganda Catholic Television. I'm Sunday Gloria Abuch. UCTV News continues with Uganda's 2030 vision of eliminating AIDS as a health threat approaching. Health Minister Dr. Jen Ruth Acheng has called on both HIV positive and HIV negative citizens to intensify efforts against new infections. Speaking at the National HIV and AIDS Symposium at the Office of the President's Auditorium, Dr. Acheng emphasized the epidemic's heavy financial toll on the nation and urged all Ugandans to join hands in the fight against HIV for a healthier, AIDS free future. According to 2023 2024 Joint AIDS Review Report, which was launched today, the country is bound not to achieve its vision of eliminating AIDS by 2030 due to a number of factors embroiled in several categories like behavior, which involves persistent suboptimal retention on antiretrovial therapy, decline in condom use, ineffective awareness campaigns, among others. These have invariably enabled a persistent rate of new infections currently at 7,300 per week. The majority are coming from young people, especially adolescent girls and young women. And the main reason for this is the lack of uh, awareness and lack of skills to protect themselves uh, against from HIV. Nevertheless, the government insists that while as its 2030 vision may not be possible, they still believe in their strategies already in play, given that the infection rate has so far dropped from 54,000 to 38,000 as of December 2023. It still shows that our interventions are working. They are working because the numbers are coming down, but they are not good enough. Since one of the factors undermining the country's 2030 vision, being lack of knowledge about the HIV among the adolescents, Dr. Vincent Bagambe reveals that they have undertaken more sensitization campaigns, which include translating the stigma and discrimination message into sign language. To create awareness in this group, we have engaged with the partners uh, to take messages through schools, and through uh, community groups. Uh, radio programs are also ongoing. And uh, in regard to the challenge of taking the messages to people with disabilities, we have uh, translated the stigma and discrimination uh, policy and guidelines into sign language. The secretary in the office of the president, Hajunus Kakande, implored members of the HIV infected community to emulate renowned AIDS activists like Phila Bongola Eltaya to mitigate stigma and discrimination of HIV-infected individuals within our communities. I therefore call upon the community of people living with HIV and the public at large to emulate such heroes like Dr. Stephen Watiti, uh, Gideon 
Jamsha, I think he's here. Uh, uh, and the rest who have emulated the late Bonga Zutraya and are, public, are publicly and positively living with HIV to bring an end to HIV related stigma and discrimination. The Minister for Health, Dr. Jen Ruth Cheng, emotionally says that Uganda can't afford to slacken the efforts in achieving her 2030 vision now, given the close amount of funds spent on facilitating infected Ugandans, which would have been dispersed for developmental projects. Imagine getting 38,200 new infections every year. Where we have come from was high. This is not good. We shouldn't even be talking about thousands. If we were talking about getting five new cases every year, that would be nice. But 38,200 is nothing to celebrate. So what I'm trying to push down into all our minds is that we all need to get very annoyed and determined to end AIDS. So that the rates of new infection are very low. And we have money to develop the economy. Because anybody who gets new infection now, imagine at 20, 25 years, you have to keep that person on drugs for life. Perhaps until over 75, our life expectancy is 68. And that is every day of the person's life. This year's symposium has been held under the theme Accelerating Interventions to End AIDS by 2030 and was also blended with the celebration of distinguished AIDS activists like Phile Bongole Lutaya, who come out and publicly declare their HIV status to curb stigmatization and discrimination of the infected individuals in the society. Joseph Kabari, UCTV News. And now it's time for Today in History. Thank you so much for being a part of it. We'll be back tomorrow, same time, same place. Good evening and good night.